Now, by the way, there's something called box diagrams, which is if you somebody said do the box diagram here for oxygen. Well, we have the 1s orbital, the 2s orbital, where we can put one electron, two electrons. Here we go. That's 1s2, 2s2, and in the 2p. At the 2p level, there's the x, y, and z suborbitals. And so we can put an electron here. But remember that Hun's rule thing. We're going to fill these suborbitals consecutively rather than jamming electrons into orbitals where we could actually uh, re kind of remove their, 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 their ability to be able to repel each other by putting them into different spaces. So this is 4, we've got to get to 8 for oxygen, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then now go back and go here for 8. Instead of putting that one there, we put that in there, and we've got 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, that's the box diagram for oxygen. And by the way, what's oxygen's charge in the periodic table? Mm, 2 negative, yeah, because it's in group 6 or 16 in the periodic table, which are all 2 negatives. Oh. Two negatives means you could actually take two more electrons oxygen. Right there and right there. Oh, that's very pretty. Okay, now, hey, what about aluminum? Well, aluminum, so we do aluminum on the periodic table. We go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and aluminum's right here, 3p1. So its outermost orbital is 3p1, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. That's what aluminum is. What's iron? Iron is going to be right here in the periodic table, element number 26. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Hey, 4s2 actually comes before, this is not 4d, it's 3d, because the d start at n equals 3. So this is 3D. 3D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 3D, 6. That's what iron is. So 1 starts at S, right? Or S starts at 1. And the P's start at N equals 2. But the D's start at N equals 3. So that means this F block down here is N equals 4, where it starts. So it's a 4F and a 5F down here. Hey, by the way, we just said that iron's outermost one was 3d6, which if we did a box diagram for, it was 4s2, 3d6. Those were the last two of the, of the parts of the electron configuration for iron. It had lots of other ones before that. And the 3d6 looks like this, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 suborbitals at n equals 3. There's, there you could have 3d orbitals. Um, 3d orbitals. You can add that the 3d, you can have five suborbitals. How do you put those six electrons in? One, two, three, four, five, and then six. Hey, by the way, if I said to you, iron likes to make an ion, and it does, what are the charge? What is the charge of that ion? Well, you know what? Iron can form a three positive charge or a two positive charge. How come? Because Here's the 4s electrons for iron, 4s2, 3d6. And here's the 3d electrons arranged in their boxes like this. What are the outermost electrons? Not these. Go back here because that's the outermost number. That's 4. If those iron, iron electrons are so far away from the nucleus at n equals 4 that you could easily remove them with some energy, you'd have a 2 positive charge for iron. Iron could be a two positive charge when you lose those electrons there, these electrons here. But iron also likes to form a what charge? A three positive charge. Why? Because if you add just a little bit more energy, this guy who's doubled up with his friend here saying, I don't like being in the same orbital. Look at all these guys get to have their own orbitals and we have to share. I'm out of here. And you, with a little bit more energy, you could easily remove that electron and give iron a three positive charge. And so that would become 3d5 as its outermost once you get rid of the 4s electrons and that one there. Ions form by either adding electrons to them or removing electrons. And when you use these box diagrams and electron configurations, 
it really, really explains it so well.